Oh, the other one good. has a TV yeah. in it. It feels good. Like Did you buy neutral? No. Okay, cool. <laughs> we don't know what. Bad. I was like, <laughs> we I don't know where neutral bad. is. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited to make this video today. I know it's been a while since my last update and really the last few weeks have been nothing but back-to-back -back racing. I'm excited to be able to just sit here and just have like a nice evening to just talk and share updates with you guys because in a little bit, we will be receiving my new bike, which I got. Ah, it's so exciting. It's so, so incredibly exciting. But before that, before that, let's just do a quick recap of all the things that have happened in the few weeks since the last video. So first off, we did a four hour endurance race for the TMGP or the Texas Mini Grand Prix series in Denton. The track itself was really fun. So if you're ever in the area, definitely check out the track. It's a, it's a fun track. The problem was that we were in the middle of a heat wave, like a really devastatingly bad heat wave. So the race started at 5 p.m., but it was still 104 degrees. And throughout the day, it actually hit 108 degrees. Fahrenheit, we found a heat gun and the track surface was 155 degrees, which was just like mind meltingly hot. And so it was just really, really brutal. We did pretty well given that it's our first time racing there. And there were moments where we, we were second overall, but with only 30 minutes left in the race, the shift lever fell off the bike. So we actually couldn't even finish the race. I mean, I guess that's just racing, right? And I feel like in a way, having these experiences just gives you that kind of strength and that fortitude to push through and you know do better, et cetera. So it was a good experience. So it was a good learning experience. Right after that, Peter and I actually headed to Crescent, which is another racetrack in the North Texas area, to race in the fifth round of the CMRA. What was really cool about that particular race round was that I was allowed to race the RCHC in two additional classes. So in the A Superbike and B Superbike classes, which are the 750cc and the 1000cc Superbike classes. But overall, you know, it was just fun to learn a new track on Friday and then race it Saturday, Sunday. So that was Fun, challenging, dramatic, again, racing. So at the end of the day, I was starting to really, really miss making videos for the channel because I felt like the last couple of things were only just about the club racing. And I feel like, you know, part of the joy of the channel for me was sharing uh, bikes and sharing really cool gear and sharing really cool apparel and sharing really cool things about the track life. And so I'm just excited to kind of get back to that, take a little bit of a break from the racing so that I can focus more on just sharing these experiences with you which leads us to today, which is, which is probably the most exciting motorcycle related day in a while for me. Because in about 30, 40 minutes, I will be receiving my new bike. And you probably guessed with the KTM shirt that it's another KTM, but I can promise you, it's not any ordinary KTM. Uh, in fact, it is a VR46 Sky Team Racing Moto3 KTM RC 250 GP. That's a ton of different words that probably doesn't mean much to a lot of folks unless you really follow racing, which you should. What it means is that it is a Moto3 bike. So in the world of like Grand Prix racing, world championship level racing, there's three tiers. There's Moto3, which is the junior class. And then there's Moto2, which is called the intermediate class. And then there's like the, the premier class, which is Moto GP, right? So what this means is that this is a pure Grand Prix race bike. It's completely different than what you and I would get if you go into like a dealership. The opportunity to buy a true Grand Prix race bike was just too special. And then not only that, but this is actually owned by the VR46 team, which is Valentino Rossi's team. And it was just, it was just too special to pass up. I don't really like fanboy over people or athletes too much, but Rossi and Pedrosa are, are hands down, like just icons of motorcycle racing. And they're the inspirations that even got me to start track riding in the first place. So the opportunity to buy one of his team's bikes was just too special. So that's what the whole title means. So it's VR46 Sky Team Racing KTM RC 250GP. So the KTM RC 250GP part means that it's a KTM factory Moto3 bike. The 250 is it's a 250cc single cylinder four stroke engine, which is made to spec for the Moto3 class. And then the GP is the, the GP, the Grand Prix race bike. And what's really neat about this is that in the Moto3 competition series, there's really Honda or KTM. Obviously I love KTM bikes. So, so again, that was another kind of draw to this machine was like, oh cool. It's, it's like the KTM to get. So when you say like a factory machine, what that means is that the entire thing ground up is built in house by that company's racing department. So truly special parts 
that are unique to that machine. It's just a bunch of things that came together that just like for me clicked and I was like, wow, like I have to get this because it's just extraordinary. And the opportunity came and I seized it. So in a little bit, you get to join me on this experience of what it's like to receive a truly world level race bike. I hope you guys are excited. Vic, this is too cool. This is crazy. You can't. Cool. Let's go. This the is the worst guys. rush of my life, man. This is Omar, guys. Hey, guys. But here it is. Oh, my God. Here we are. Whoa. It is beautiful. Wow. I am super jealous. And you're going to ride it, too, right? Yes, absolutely. I ride everything I have. So reckless. Whoa, that's so wild. It's so slim. Yeah, it, it weighs nothing. Oh, my like God. Nothing. It's the Moto 2 that I picked up. I was. Yeah. I was like messing around with it, man. I was like, you can literally like lean it and hold it with one hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this thing is surreal, man. No, the, the Grand Prix bikes are just so, so light compared to everything else. Um, very cool. All right, I'm gonna put this thing down so we can help them get it out, but oh my gosh, here we go. Yep. Uh, let me put it in here. Whoa. So, it's the the Moto Three class is yeah. like the, the 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 lighter weight junior class of the race bikes. Um, it only weighs 180 pounds. It's a 660 horsepower at 180 pounds. You want to take her? I'll wheel it back. Yeah. Do we have the rear stand? Yeah, of course. I got a box for you. You get with a bunch of stuff. Do you have control? I think. No, don't say I think. <laughs> I'll say that. It's so tiny. It's, it's like. Oh no, dude. So I pulled everything. Right, you could. It feels good. Yeah. It feels good. Did you find neutral? No. Okay. Cool. <laughs> we don't know what. Like, <laughs> we don't know where neutral is. You didn't have because neutral. It just has go, man. It just has go. Yeah. I can't believe you're gonna ride that thing, man. You got some balls, bro. <laughs> you have some balls. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, All right. I'm gonna stop the video. Yeah. Let me. <laughs> okay. We are now back in my brother's garage and we have some unboxing to do. So I wanted to share with you guys a few different things. So like what comes with the bike when you order a Moto3 bike. So let's get started. So the first thing is stands. So whenever you buy a new bike, you've got to get fancy stands, right? So these are the Valor Moto, the rear stand here. The front stand's on its way right now. I don't have the front stand with me, but I really, really like the craftsmanship. I really like how lightweight it is, especially compared to say like my Pitbull stands. Um, this is just really nice and it looks really trick and looks very racy. So I like them. They look cool. The other things that came with the bike are two different boxes. So the first box here, I've already cut it open, but essentially we have a new bike cover, which I'm excited about. Should we put it on? I'll put it on later. Um, and then we have a cap. <laughs> we also have a bunch of t-shirts from Amatu Moto, which I'm really excited about. I actually asked them to include some shirts for my mom and for my friends, etc. So uh, we have a bunch of shirts, a bunch of different polos. Oh, and we have some, some paperwork. I'll share that in a second. On the subject of Amatu Moto, so Amatu Moto is the dealership that I worked with for um, acquiring the Moto3. And the, the name of the owner is Juan P. Alonso, and he's got relationships with various race teams. And so he's able to broker these deals with these teams, which is super, super cool. What happened was I've been kind of just browsing their website for a long time now, for like almost two years now, just kind of just window shopping and just browsing. And then this opportunity came up, I said KTM Moto3 pre-order. There was no images, there's nothing. I reached out and I asked them like, you know, who's like, which bike are you talking about? And they said, well, it's actually a VR46 bike. I was like, okay, well then, you know, I think I'm gonna have to have it. And then they explained that it's actually um, a 2019 season bike that Dennis Poggio rode when he was on the VR4016 before he switched to Leopard. So that's who I worked with to get the bike. The process in itself is definitely very different than saying like going to a dealership and ordering a bike ride. Or even when we ordered the KTM RC8C, that was through like just an online portal essentially. So this is a little bit different, a little bit more intimate, a little bit more personal, um, pretty cool. So additionally, we have some documents. And so let's take a look real quick. We have a uh, little brochure again, folder. Oh, here we are. So this is a little placard. So it's the Sky VR46 team with Dennis Foggia and some stickers, of course. <laughs> Always have to have stickers, okay guys? That's literally why we buy anything, right? Anything else here? I think they also own the Global Racing Oil Company, so GRO, so they supply a lot of oils for various uh, professional racing teams, so that's why it's included this. I think there's some affiliation there, yep, and a ton of stickers for GRO, so. Yeah, if you need racing oil, apparently that's the way to go. We also have a letter 
that just says, thanks for buying there. We have a certificate of authenticity with the VIN number on it, showing which, which bike it is, which Moto3 bike it is. Um, and then there's also instructions on, you know, how to start the bike, what to check for, etc. The whole start sequence in of itself is a little bit different. For example, to prepare for starting the bike, you have to warm up the bike to 60 degrees Celsius and race temperature should be operational between 65 to 72 degrees Celsius. Um, just the whole sequence of, you know, putting the bike on the starter, there's just like a lot more that goes into it. It's not just click a button and you're, you're good to go. Um, some other additional information here, you've got uh, the fuel, it has to be 102 or 103 octane um, for, the, for the fuel. The oil that's recommended is 0W30, so completely different viscosity than what we use for, say, the RC8C or the Duke. Engine coolant, similar with everything else, distilled water for race or engine coolant conservation. This one is interesting, guys. All right, so racing service. So check the bike and the components every 500 kilometers. Servicing for the suspension itself, front and rear, is every 3,000 kilometers. Clean and renew filters every 1,000 kilometers. Brake fluid is two track days. So uh, that's, all, that's pretty frequent, actually. And then oil and oil filters every 500 kilometers. So that's uh, probably like two, maybe three track days. That's standard. That's what we do on the RC8C and on any track book that I have as well. Uh, complete racing service of the bike is every 1,000 kilometers. That's pretty frequent. Complete servicing of the engine is every 1,800 to 2,000 kilometers. So that's, that's really often for an engine service. Basically every 1,800, every 2,000 kilometers, you are uh, servicing it. So the current mileage is 1,320 kilometers. And uh, so, you know, in about 500 kilometers, we're gonna have to do a service, which is pretty, pretty substantial. And then every other service, you're gonna do an engine and gearbox service. So um, yeah, that's just kind of like, the, the thing about buying these bikes that I've learned is that there's a lot that goes into them. That's why there's literally teams that support them and service them. Um, and you know, for me, I think I enjoy kind of like different experiences. And so, you know, this is, this is what comes with it. So we're gonna learn a lot together, basically. Uh, there's some information about the data acquisition system. I'll probably do a video separately for that. It's a Delordo data acquisition system. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much. Okay, all right, let's keep going with our unboxing. There is more t-shirts, another folder, uh, extra throttle tubes, yay. Another hat. And then we've got the charging cable, cool. Okay, so the, the, the battery system is a dead loss system. It has to be charged up to 100% in order for it to start. Um, so that's just something I want to do later. And, oh, and a sprocket. Yeah, I wonder how expensive just the sprocket is. It looks like it's used, <laughs> so, okay. All right, that's it for this box. Let's jump to the final box. Ugh. Oh, this is heavier. Okay. Okay, where's my scissor? Okay, cool. More polos. <laughs> more polos and more polos. Cool, from uh, Giro, so that's cool. Oh, cool, oh wow, okay, all right, so here we are. We have oil. This is the Giro OW30 that we needed to, to run in the bike, cool. Thank you for providing that. We've got three more hats. Okay, basically I have all the hats, guys. Um, and then we have gel. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's hand wash paste. Thank you, okay, that's thoughtful. We also have some DOT4 brake fluid. Cool, so it uses dot for brake fluid. This is GRO's brake fluid. I think that's pretty similar to what we, what we use on a regular bike, right? So that's nice to know. And then we've got a little Ziploc bag with nothing in it, I don't think. Okay, chain loop, nice. And then we've got rust penetrant spray. And then more, oh, Silicon Plus, multi-spray PTFE. So basically I got the whole Giro kit for fluids and sprays. Contact cleaner, nice. Okay, so basically just more stuff for what we need to, to, to do the first oil service um, and some cleaning stuff basically. So, you know, that's, that's fine. So what I'd like to do next is basically take some measurements of the bike. I don't have a scale here, so we can't weigh it, but I did, I was just also just wanted to see kind of just like the dimensions of the bike because 
One of the wildest things about this bike is how small it is, right? It, so remember I was explaining that like Moto3 is a junior class, right? So a lot of the riders are, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old. Like the age limit is like up to 27, I believe, is, is as old as you can get. So these are young adults that are riding it. So the bikes themselves are very compact uh, and very, very agile, very, very light. So I have a measure. So let's measure it. So I put the bike in the wheel chalk for this reason so that it's all level. So from the ground to the seat is about, I'd say 31 inches at its kind of middle position here. And it's a little bit higher towards the back. From nose to tail, all right, let's do the wheelbase. So the, the wheelbase is about 70 inches from the back to the front about 31 inches seat height. So it's a very compact bike. Another dimension that I really wanna show you guys is the width of the seat. It is so narrow. So let me just bring it over here for you. So here's the bike up close. It's just, it's so beautiful guys. It's just so, so beautiful, but it is so small. But look at how, look at how narrow the seat is. Isn't that crazy? It's absolutely so, so incredibly narrow. Look at the seat. It's so cool, guys. Look at that. And the exhaust, the dual exhaust here. Check out all the data, the sensors there. Can you guys see that? So you have four connectors there for data logging. I love how bleak and simple the rear sets are. It really kind of stands out for race bikes or like pr uh, prototype race bikes at least. But you can just see it kind of becomes bulbous at the front, but you can see how insanely narrow and slim it is right there. It's incredible. And then, okay, here's, here's, the, here's the big reason why I bought the bike, guys. Do you see that? This is the big reason why I bought the bike. Just an absolute treat. An absolute pleasure. Let's take a close up look at the forks. So these are pretty beefy WP forks. So again, WP, like I said a while ago, this is a, you know, a KTM factory bike, right? So everything is KTM for the chassis, the suspension itself. WP is owned by KTM. Here's a brake lever guard. Uses Brembo's for the master cylinder. It feels very, very, very good. Very firm, extremely firm. You've got the domino grips. You got the start kill switch. The dash here, oops, sorry. Got the dash here. Um, some, some buttons over there, very simple. Actually, it's very, very simple. Yeah, it's, it's something else, guys, very special. I'm gonna hop on it now just to show you like what it looks like with an adult on it. So for reference, I am five foot seven, so not the biggest person here. Pretty much your average Asian dude. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, here we are. Ooh. Tiny. It honestly feels almost like a like a larger uh, like Ovale even or an RS250 GP, the one that they're using for the uh, the Talent Cup as well um but yeah it's it's just it's a race bike through and through very compact very efficient and in a way you know i i, I think like just the design of it it feels very analog and very mechanical right it's like the complete antithesis or the opposite of say like modern ducatis right it's not a panigale um you're spending <laughs> v4r money but at the same time, you're getting something that's very unique and special, and it's very much a prototype machine. You can see that, and and uh, you know, I just love it. I absolutely love it. It's 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 a it's like a, a museum piece almost, you know. So I can't wait to start it. Okay, so I'm sure you guys want me to start the bike. Unfortunately, the bike does not have a starter. We actually have to go get a roller starter. I'm working with various options right now to figure out where and when I can source that because right now apparently everyone's uh, apparently those are pretty limited in supply as well. And the other final piece that we need is the MS-102 or MS-103 
um, unleaded high octane fuel that you need for a race bike and that's also in short, short supply as well so working with a few different folks to get that as well so as soon as I get the feel and the roller starter we can fire her up and then see how the bike rides and how the bike feels and I can and I'm so excited to be able to share that with you guys in the meantime what I'll probably do is I'll bring it over to Peter's we'll put it up on the lift and then just take the bike apart just to see the insides and really get an understanding of what what's beneath the bodywork of a Grand Prix uh, world level race bike, right? And I think that's that's the whole point of this experience is to be able to see and kind of demystify, you know, why are these bikes so special? What makes them so special? What makes them so different than say any production bike that you and I can get, right? So I'm just so, so excited to be able to share this with you guys. And I hope you guys are too. So that leads me to the final thing, which is, again, if you guys are new to the channel, please, please, please consider, you know, leaving a comment. Apparently that really helps with the algorithm as well as leaving a like, uh, recommend it to your friends and you know subscribe to the channel for more more uh, track content and as you can see it's a little bit different here and I just want to share really special bikes with you with the, like the KTM RC8C the Moto 3 and anything else that comes up in the future so I hope you guys are excited I hope you guys come back and enjoy more of this adventure with me and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video all right thank you very much